Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made. YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome back to Gallup Racer 2004. As you guys can see, new year. This is year 32, 32 on uh, this playthrough in this series. And um, I decided to change my silks, which happens. I just get bored of the silks eventually. Like, I like to run them. I like to basically do my silks in coordination with the horses that we have and kind of the time periods that we're going through so i think for this new wave of falls which are going to be our strongest falls i i always like to change my silks when i know we're going to get a new batch of really good horses and on the track so <clears throat> i wanted to show you guys the pasture to kick off today's episode because i'm going to show you guys breeding i'm doing and of course i won't actually get through to the new foals being born in this episode so i'm going to try to extend this as long as possible i'm going to try to race as much as i can with all the horses i have available it's only gonna be a couple of months obviously because i mean april is going to be here um or actually technically now i think about it uh i'm not going to be able to do that so never mind i, I figure we're this episode we're going to get all the way through probably april if we can um that's my goal Again, I wanted to save this for a live stream, but it's been a, a very rough couple of days, of course, for personal reasons, and uh, Galbracer is, is helping me kind of stay together during this time, so um, like I said, just setting up my live stream, I just haven't been in the energy to do that, not to mention I'm usually recording these really late, so I'm not. it's not even during a time where I'd probably be live streaming, but anyways, um, I want to show you guys the breeding I decided I wanted to do this year. Um, so basically we're going to be using diamond plan with five of our seven brute mares so i'm going to do diamond plan and chasing hearts diamond plan and lee's gold diamond plan and pink gemstone now these three right off the bat should be should give us something great i i don't know who's going to be the best because i think outside of chasing hearts lee's gold and pink gemstone these two gals have both been very well as brute mares for us but so we're doing those two with diamond plan Oh, as a bottom, this girl right here, uh, they should give us really uh, something really strong. And then we'll also do a uh, moon trapper. I decided to use her. And like I said, I figure why not? She was extremely consistent, uh, despite the fact that she didn't achieve what I wanted to. Um, but she's only six years old. So who knows? I mean, she could be a special broodmare force, or maybe she didn't do so well on the track, but she could end up being uh, obviously a good broodmare to use. Uh, for our foals so, and keep in mind she also comes from desert diver and ant b so we're keeping ant b alive we're keeping desert diver alive still in some way and uh yeah i'm curious how that's going to turn out now the other two i decided to do were general reason um i wanted to at least get two foals out of him because if these two foals don't do anything then obviously i know i'm not going to use him too much but i still want to get a couple foals out of general reason again because of his abilities so Irish Fleet in general reason, she has very good stats except for response. She has a couple of C's in there that I'm not worried about. That power rating is the biggest thing that I've noticed is really working for me and my horses. So I'm glad we're going to be getting that. And then Fiery Dancer as well. She doesn't have bad stats uh, except for obviously the stam is not where I want it. The power and temper are not great. So I'm hoping general reason can maybe kind of balance those out to an extent. Uh, but she has good speed, staying heart, and toughness, which I know he has, I think, good heart and good toughness, or at least good heart for sure. So, yeah, I'm um, I'm excited for all the breedings. Um, I think this is these will be good. I, I think with Diamond Plan, every one of those horses, except for maybe Moon Trapper, should be solid. I just don't know how she's going to be as a broodmare, but I think Diamond Plan and the other four broodmares should give us awesome foals. In general reason, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I want to use him because he has good abilities. And he was easy to work with. I just think it was his stats that were holding him back. Like, if general reason was a stronger colt and stronger older horse, we would have won a lot more. I just feel like some of his stats weren't quite there for us. Um, Silver Bullet, I'll be trying out maybe next year. I don't know with who because I still want to keep the Greys alive, obviously. And he's the only one uh, it's still tied to Sedate Ruler when you think about it. Um, so yeah, but general reason, you look at his stats here, he doesn't have bad stats, it's just they weren't strong enough to make him a dominant multi-time grade one winner. His temper is D, his feel is C, outside of that, everything else is B and up. 
you know? So it's not like he's a terrible horse, but just struggled to really get what I wanted. But he has strong card, and, that, and that's what I'm looking for. So I'm hoping um, his stats will balance out. He has the late growth type that I like. So I know with his folds, it's going to be an uphill battle for sure. I'm going to have to remind myself to be patient. Um, but there's no guarantee things are going to go according to plan. Um, I'll, I want to show you guys the full names as well. I did decide on these um, for you. So, of course, the two-year-olds, we've kept these names, but the one-year-old. So I decided to go ahead and name Vivid Legend and Irish Fleet's uh, son here. Irish legend. I thought that was really fitting for this guy. And this, I think it's, yeah, I only named two of these myself. So Irish, uh, Vivid Legend and Irish Fleet, Irish legend, I thought was, like I said, uh, really fitting for this horse considering his parents. And hopefully he'll turn out to be uh, something close to that level. Uh, anyways, the next one is Golden Wings. This one was named from Armino. Uh, this is Flying Cowboy and Lee's Gold. So this is going to be the brother of uh, Lee's Cowboy, who's going to be hitting the track this year. He should be solid. We see the pedigree Western Tiger. That power rating already showing up at three stars. That's fantastic. Next is Galaxy Star. This is, of course, longtime supporter Abigail Clayton, who decided to go ahead and name this horse. And, of course, this is from Vivid Legend out of Chasing Hearts. I thought the theme of Galaxy Star still kind of fit in there um really excited for this filly man three star future from her she's got arctic crop in there and suave buster so more speed strong heart willfulness i'm really excited for galaxy star um i'm hoping she's not hard to work with and i don't think she should be because none of those horses on in, in her pedigree were difficult to work with so there's galaxy star next is real happy uh, kendrick uh, provided the name for this filly and this is Vivid Legend and Pink Gemstone. So she should be really fun to work with. You see her pedigree there. Real happy. I thought that was a good name for her. Desert Falcon. Blues Breeze and Fiery Dancer from KNS. I thought this was fitting. Now, Desert Falcon looks to be one of the strongest so far. He's got two three star ratings for Future and Calm so far. Again, Blues uh, Breeze, Fiery Dancer. Oh, also from Sedate Ruler. Okay, I keep forgetting Fiery Dancer came from her. So we have two horses still connected to Sedate Ruler, technically. It's a Ghost, uh, our stud, and then Desert Falcon here. So that's a good thing. So I wonder, with Desert Falcon, he has Sedate Ruler in him on his mother's side. It's possible that, depending on what broodmare we, were, we're, we breed him with, if he turns out to be good enough to send to the barn... We could still potentially get grays from him. I mean, of course, it's going to be less likely since it's further down the line, but he's still tied to Sedate Ruler. It's very possible. I mean, it's essentially it would be a recessive gene for him. Uh, I don't know what to expect from this guy. I mean, Fiery Dancer, she didn't do as much as I thought she should, but she was fast like her mother. You know, she was very fast. Um, Blue's Breeze, he did well enough for what he needed to give us. So this horse, Desert Falcon, like I said, I'm not really sure. I think we lost one of only uh, Blues Breeze's only foals in Cat Cattail, which is still annoying. But the last horse on this list is Cleopatra. I decided to name her um, for several reasons, really. But <laughs> this is Flying Cowboy and Ozamato. Now, this gal should be really strong. She's got the power of Western Tiger and Flying Cowboy. Awesome Autumn in there as well. And you can see, she's, she is by far the strongest out of this group of, six, of um, yearlings that we have, essentially. She is three stars on everything except for her flex. So, yeah, this could be... This this will be interesting. If she turns out to be a monster on the track, then Cowboy and Awesome, and awesome Autumn could be a line that I stick with. Now, lines that I think work for sure are Cowboy and Lee's Gold. I think those two together have definitively proven so far that we're going to get a really good racehorse. So those are the names. That's what we got going. We have two two-year-olds hitting the track this year. So uh, let's get into some racing today and see how we do. No challenges, as always, because why would I waste my time? Time is valuable. 
and uh, obviously I don't like wasting my time on things that aren't going to help give us the results you want. So Toxic Blonde, we're still trying to get in rhythm with her. She's up in an open, and she is the favorite. I think I decided to take the blinkers off of her, and I did. Yeah, I don't know if I showed you guys this. I took the blinkers off of her um, because since she wants to run at the back, I don't feel like it's really helping her. Most of my closers, I think, are okay without blinkers, but if they're running at the front, I don't know if it's actually a thing. I know I've read about it. I know it's a thing in Galbracer 3 where if you put blinkers on your horses and depending on their leg type, it does make a difference. In this game, I don't know if it's proven or not. Wouldn't surprise me. That's just how Tecmo operates. But yeah, we decided to um, take off uh, the blinkers in the hood and just keep her with her shadow roll and her bandages in the back. So let's see how she does. Um, yeah, Blues Breeze and Leaves Gold. I take that back. This is the Blues Breeze uh, horse. She should be really solid. Um, her stats are not as impressive as I thought. Like, as far as what we can see. I mean, that feel is not good. Response and everything else is whatever. So, um... Yeah. The horses are in the gate. Let's we'll see how she does. And away they go! Alright, so it's a decent start here, but again, she needs to be at the back. Now, I hope that she has real closing speed, which she, she should. I mean, Blue's Breeze was very fast at his closing speed, and Lee's Gold was also quick. So, I just want to see her real speed. I just feel like we haven't yet been exposed to how fast she truly can be. So, I'm kind of waiting for that breakthrough moment. She's going to get a 7 here, which is good. I'm going to have to make sure I keep her from running too fast. I don't know what her temper is, so I don't want to slow her down too much, because if you try that too much with a horse with a bad temper, that's literally the catalyst that seems to send them just off, okay, this is off into a blind rage. But she's, um, yeah, she settled down pretty nicely. She shouldn't have a bad temper. Okay, two sevens. We are the favorite. Damn, still not looking too high. Okay, she has stretch burst, no last corner leader, just fine. Let's get her going Two now. Furlongs to go. No Revo, I don't think she needs it. Let's see the speed now from Toxic. Okay, that's a good drive. That's a really good drive from Toxic Blonde here. First with the new eight. silks. Like the looks of it. And uh, there's close race okay, she pulls away. About time we see something more. It's just an open, but that's good. Nice stride, took the blinkers off of her, and I think that made a big difference. So, good stuff. Let's go, baby. It's a good win to kick off today's episode. She does it. With these silk colors, I guess I still wanted to incorporate a little bit of the channel's theme into it, but also go with something different. So, uh, hopefully you guys like... Even if someone doesn't, the colors are sticking. So, you gotta live with it. But, long live Bolero. This is his five-year-old season, and I've finally given him tack, because I think this is the year he's obviously going to start winning. And he's the favorite today, finally. I don't know, I mean, he's won, I think, two races, but he hasn't been the favorite, it seems like, in a while. So let's check him out. Oh, I didn't give him tack yet. Did... I... <laughs> Well, scratch everything I said. I thought I gave him his tack already, and apparently I haven't. <laughs> uh, that's embarrassing. His stam is still not good. Only 56. So I have to be very mindful about the races I put him in. And, of course, he's a turf horse and a dirt horse. At least, from what I know, his dirt rating hasn't been revealed yet. But I don't necessarily want to run him on the dirt too much if, like, that's just not going to be ideal for him. The horses are in the gate. Go. His dirt rating has got to be okay, though. He's got it in his pedigree. I'd be hard-pressed to believe that his dirt rating was, like, below okay. You know what I mean? I feel like that rating is only for horses that only have turf in their pedigree. But he has dirt in his, so his dirt rating shouldn't be the worst. It should be at least okay. Okay or good. But, um... Until I feel more comfortable with him, I'm just going to keep running him on the turf. Because I know that's going to be... 
his um his preferred uh, his preferred grounds to run on. He's not like Ray Bolero as far as the dirt horse is concerned. Okay, this is where the so race is won. Run him on the turf. I thought I put my tack on him. Apparently not. I wonder why I decided not to. That's really weird. I'll do that after this race, though. And they're in the home stretch. That's for the leader. Very good. Oh, Revo. Come on, Great Valero. You got it, bro. Falling back a little bit. What's going on, brother? Why does... Uh, what? Stamina? Show your guts! Come on, Valero. <laughs> yeah, I... Ah, uh, come on, dude. Bad spurt? I mean, what What do they need me to do? Go later? No, if I went later, I would have gotten smoked too. My only guess is they wanted me to go sooner, which is a bit annoying because the stamina was already dropping. Come on, man. That's... Ugh. That's annoying. That's really annoying. That 73 speed for Toxic Blonde. That was her first win, actually. Keep running open. I'm just gonna keep running her in these 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 type of races for now. Yeah, long live Bolero. That's a bummer. Like what? Yeah, supposed to win that and that's corner leader spurt explosive. Like I don't know what they. Hmm. I'm just trying to understand what I could have done differently there. Like, I was almost on a revolution, and then the, the spurt ends up being D. And I don't know if that would have been the case if we won that race, but... Apparently, I need to start him a bit sooner. But, like, it already seemed like he was kind of on the back foot. Gonna run him in an open. Gonna do his tack now. But, um... Yeah, that's, uh... That one's really weird. I don't know what the game really wanted me to do differently there. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Okay, so we're going to give him the Great Bolero's hood, but just the opposite colors. I mean, the opposite. So black with the white. It doesn't really look that much different, but it, it is. Um, shadow roll. Did Great Bolero have a shadow roll? I know it sounds ridiculous for me to say that about my own horse, but I, I feel like I don't remember him having a shadow roll. Um, yeah, he didn't actually have a shadow roll. Okay, so... I guess I will, um... You know what? Like, the blinkers could be affecting him as well. In terms of his performance, they could be. Now, he had the all-white bandages. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do white and black. For his son here. Or his grandson, technically. Should we do the black shadow roll? It's the same. I mean, if you see that horse with those colors and tack on track, you pretty much know who that horse is related to. So we'll stick with that. And let's see if the blinkers actually help him with his leg type. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else they really wanted me to do in that race, to be honest with you. I have no idea. It's a little strange to me. It's a little bit strange to me, but see if um, next time around I'll get him started a little bit earlier with the blinkers. We'll see if the combination of those things can net us the win. Toxic Blonde's back up. He's expected to finish third behind Goodbye Wave and Sudden Crop. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like Blue's Breeze might be a little bit of a flop as a sire, which I'm glad I haven't used him for a lot of horses. Like, I mean, I've only gotten two or three out of them top, so... Um, toxic. Let's see how she does. I feel better with her. I feel much better with her now that I've taken off the blinkers. I know her leg type. Her speed at 73. It's a little bit concerning just because I thought she was going to be much faster. I thought she'd at least be close to 80. And maybe she'll hit 80 at her peak, but that's the problem. At her peak. I 
I don't know. I just thought she'd be a little bit faster from Blue's Breeze and Lee's Gold. But are in the gate. if she does hit 80 speed, I mean, that's good enough for us to win. Get her a title. Know where they go. That was a great start. You know, but depending on the rest of her stats, like, I'm not sure if I'm going to want to use her for breeding. It, it depends. Like, she... She's kind of starting to feel like a Moon Trapper type of course, where it's like, okay, I know she's not bad, but is she going to win a lot? Is she going to win the big races that I want to win? I don't... I'm undecided if that can be her reality, so... You know... I think, like, the only thing I could really focus on with her, unless she really starts to show us our form, and she's still developing, she hasn't had her peak yet, but... I feel like the only thing I can probably try to go for with her is like a sprint champ title. You know, I think she can be fast enough to get that, but that's about it. Let's go. Let's go. One tap. And they're good in the run. home stretch. Very good run. So let's see how she digs in. She's got plenty of stamina. She's driving hard here. Toxic Blonde driving hard. Here comes the three though. It's a tough race. Very tough race. Any close race okay? No. Where's the fight? Okay, there's Stretch Burst. That's going to help her stay in fourth, but not third. Finish. <sighs> um. Oh, our goal was top five. I was going to say, we failed that goal. Be on the spurt? I mean... I don't really know what they want me to do differently here. I feel like I'm running these horses how I've been running them for the most part. Um, and still getting decent results, but, like, that's, yeah. She never really picked up like I thought, and that's what I mean. Like, I'm worried about her stats to an extent. Because if that's any of the other horses, like, you know, Golden Boy, Moonbee, Stargazing, but, you know, they're, they're winning that race, and at a grade one level, they're winning that race from that position, so that's a little bit concerning for Toxic Bond. Tigers of Stone, she's up. I've had no issues with this gal. The game told me she was going to be the worst horse out of the uh, the three-year-olds that we're racing now, and she's definitively, she's clearly the best. So take that as you will. And she looks ready to go, Tigers of Stone. Now, these are the stats... Some of them of which I was hoping to have on uh, Toxic Blonde that we just raced on. But she's not close to this at all. So, um, still don't know what her stamina is. I would love to know that, the staying in the toughness. And her max distance. But she's ready to go, and this is a grade three. So, if we win this race, it goes to show you, it's definitely more of the horse in this case. Like I said, with Long Live Bolero, I could have started him maybe a bit sooner. I don't know if that would have made that much of a difference or if the he was just going to get in the gate. gobbled up in the stretch regardless. Toxic Blonde is just kind of... That one I'm genuinely confused about because I thought we had a really good run. We had nobody in our way. And she just never kicked into that second gear, really. She stayed well enough just to finish in the top five. And I know our odds were third. We were the third favorite, but I felt like we... We had a really good run to win, and just nothing happened, so. Um, See, so yeah, I'm not really sure what to make of her in that race. Like, I don't know if she actually needs to be in, in, in front, in the lead. You know, once you hit that final turn, maybe she does. Maybe she's a horse that won't work too well playing catch-up. Which is disappointing, because her leg type puts her as kind of a closer. Not a deep closer, but she's more of that than a, uh, than a proceeder or a front runner. So if I can't run horses down from they behind, are down the back stretch. that means like I'm gonna have to make sure I'm very uh, technical about getting her ahead of the rest of the field by the time okay, we hit the final this stretch. Is where the race is won. I didn't have to worry about that with Honeybee from Gal Racer 2003. You know, Honeybee was a serious closer. As long as we had space and she wasn't too far off, Honeybee could make up that ground. Toxic Blonde, she's not, it's clearly not the same horse, same type of horse. Two furlongs to go. This is what I mean, like, it, it's the horse, like, I'm, I'm running my horses, I'm timing my spurts exactly where I usually need to, you know, so, Tigers of Stone, she does this and she blows the field out of the water, I can't do that with Bolero and, and Toxic Blonde, you know what I mean? Fantastic. I mean, she smokes this field in this grade three. Absolutely destroys him. 
I don't know what this game is talking about. Saying T versus Stone, we don't know about her. Like, we've been winning with her back to back. She's on a roll, man. Butterfly effect, watch out. Your stablemate's coming for you. <laughs> Your stablemate is coming for you. She wins by 10 lanes. And it's a, it's a perfect race. This is what I mean. Like, I need the right horses. If I don't have the right horses with the right stats, right running style, like, you know, I'm not going to have the best results with them. And Bolero's back up. Favorite in this open. He was the favorite in that grade three, and we dropped it. Like I said, the only thing I can do is start him sooner. And technically, he might as well be co-favorites with the eight-horse Frail Bank. We almost have the same odds. Now, we did give him some blinkers, some tack today, so... He's five years old. I mean, it's about time. Last corner leader, spurt, explosive, but his stam's still not good. His field is 77. Power's 49. Heart's 57. So, yeah, I mean, he's he's not as gutsy as his grandfather and the rest of his pedigree would show. But, um... I mean, that's the thing. It's like you want to keep the Bolero lineage alive, but, you know, nobody has been as good as him since the great Bolero as far as his pedigree is concerned. The so are in the gate. It's the thing. If I retire this guy, long live Bolero, you know, I gotta breed him an extremely go. strong brood mare. Like S's and A's only type of stats. No bad stats. Then we could maybe get the great Bolero back and she would have to be a dirt horse. Ideally that's kinda what I'm already planning in my head. You know, this guy can obviously get himself a title at the minimum. Couple grade one wins. I'm gonna have to use a really strong brood mare with no bad stats at all, like nothing lower than an A, preferably. A or a B at the lowest. And then, um, yeah, use that. Try to buff up his less than stellar stats and make sure she's a dirt horse too, so we have a better chance of potentially getting a real dirt horse. Okay, this is where the race is won. Um, so I'm going to start his spurt earlier because apparently last time I started too late and then he didn't do anything. So I figure if I have the blinkers on him now, we get him out in front early. You know what I mean? Get him ahead of this field early right now. Get him on the drive now. Two furlongs to go. Now Revo, but hopefully with last corner leader this will help. Let's and we dropped him in class. Let's see if the blinkers in this. He doesn't have good power, so he's gonna. You see how fast his stamina dropped up the hill. Oh, wow, that's gonna be a problem. Man. Come on, Bolero, finish strong, bud, and he's gonna get him. a winner. That was better, but that was still kind of a struggle, man. That was still a struggle, but he, he gets his his well, not his first win, but his first win in a while. I'm not sure if the blinkers made that big of a difference. That's the only problem. Like, he's a horse I really... It's almost like I can't run him on any surfaces that have any inclines or whatever. Because it seems like he's going to struggle because he doesn't have the power for it. It, may, if, I'm, it might be better off... I might be better off running him on dirt. That yeah, power is going to really affect us. And I know you still need power for certain dirt tracks too, but... You know, you don't have to worry about the inclines typically on the dirt circuits, so maybe maybe I need to try them on the dirt, you know? Run them a couple of times, figure out what that dirt rating really is. Butterfly effect. Speaking of her, she's up in a grade two because there's no grade ones for her. 12 furlong. She's the heavy favorite. Nobody's even close. Nobody I'm worried about. Yeah, no, she's been on an absolute roll. Normal growth type, which is fantastic. Yeah, she's been on a roll, man. Western Tiger and Irish Fleet. That power comes into handy, man. I think I said in the last episode, I've really underestimated the the importance of having a horse with really good power. The horses are because in you the can game. handle so many tracks and not lose your, you know, not have a major girl, drop off in your stamina and your speed start. compared to other horses. What's wrong, girl? Okay, I don't know what upset her, but. She got out clear. She got out clear ahead of everybody. Now I'm going to send her to the rail, and she's just going to just stay here. And if she stays this far ahead, she might tap into that solo runner ability, which I've noticed I need to at least be two lengths ahead of the horse behind me. I think she's fine. Like They're just kind of chilling back there. I'm going to keep her where she's at. I don't feel any need to really slow her down right now. 
think she's feeling very comfortable out front here. She gets a 7. They're solo. Yeah. So at least two lanes or more. I don't care what the readme says. Every time I've been able to activate that ability, I've noticed by paying attention, I've always been at least at a minimum of two lanes. Anything shorter than that, then like it won't pop up and it won't activate. But if, a, if I'm at least two horse lanes ahead from the second place horse, then I know it, it usually taps in. It's been smooth sailing for Butterfly Flag. Down she the is stretch. running at a very even, easy pace here. She's not having to exert herself. She's a little bit upset that we're not going as fast, so I'm going to give her just a little bit of encouragement. Okay, this is where the race is won. Now she's going to try to really steamroll it down this hill. I'm going to just pull her back. I'm sure she understands we're not doing that. <laughs> really easy race for her. 12 furlong. She's got the power. She's got the stamina to handle this distance. I mean... They have to do a lot of catching up. Get her on the go now. And they're in the home Last stretch. corner leader. No revo. Not like she needs it. She's just going to take away with this grade, too. Absolutely take away with it. An amazing burst of speed. Butterfly effect. This girl is awesome, man. Cannot wait to use her as a broodmare. I think she's going to be our strongest broodmare. Excellent. That I've had. We have a winner. Like, stats-wise, for sure. No bad stats. Her lowest... I wonder if they'll give her a B for her lowest stats. Maybe C's? They may give her one C, but I think everything else is legitimately going to be at least A and up. <laughs> Easy G2 win there for Butterfly. She gets it done. Seven length winner. Smooth sailing with my baby. Our baby. <laughs> yeah, she's just she's, she's making it really easy out there, man. That's it's a joy working with her. So that was a good week. I mean, everybody got a win except for Toxic Blonde, which we weren't supposed to win that race anyways, but yeah, good week. Lots of points, as I need. <laughs> so, Bolero, they want you in a grade two. I'm going to try running you on the dirt, honestly. Oh, he's 8 to 12 furlongs for sure. Why? His stamina is only 56. Why have they given him such a long distance? I'm going to run you on the dirt, man. I'm, I'm going to see how you handle that because um, I feel like the turf just, I don't know. I feel like, just like I said, with the power that he may need, I feel like the turf is just kind of messing with him. Yeah, her lowest rating is her heart. Other than that, butterfly effect is super solid. So um, 6G1 wins for her. 14 finishes in the top three out of her 16 lifetime starts. I mean, she's been on a roll for us, man. She has definitively been my best uh, broodmare so far. Our best stuff, Philly. I think she hasn't won a GWS yet, which we're going to do this year. But um, between her and Chasing Hearts, I mean, Chasing Hearts was very tough. as She fought hard, and she won a GWS. I feel like Butterfly Effect is not that type of horse. I don't feel like we're going to struggle with Butterfly Effect. You know, I feel like she's going to win pretty handily every time she's on the track. As long as I run her right. So... Mm, climax? That's a tough race, but I think she can win that. What's her distance again? Nine? She can also run in a sprint. That's the thing. I mean, she she's very flexible. I feel like we can run her in quite a bit. I wanted to run her in the six furlong, I could, but I'm going to try her out in the climax. I think that's a little bit more appropriate for her. That's a big win if she can net that. Um, Tigress of Stone moves up to A. Yeah, she's got four wins out of her six starts, so she's looking good. Still need to figure out her stamina. 80 power, again, and that comes from Flying Cowboy and Western Tiger. Yeah, Tigris just, I don't know what this game was talking about. It really was trying to tell me that she was going to be a bad horse. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Runner in a grade three. Let's just keep stacking up these wins for her, building up confidence. Toxic Blonde. Still don't know much about you. Like, Stang's not bad. Don't know what the power and the stamina is. That'd be nice to know. So she runs seven to whatever. I still think she's a sprinter. Got to run her in this open. Keep it simple. Get another win. Stacking wins seems to reveal more of your horse's stats, even if it's only an open. All right. So. I 
Like, these special horses have no decent abilities. Like, that, that's unbelievable. What a waste. Um, actually, let's see who's in the Kyoto. Can I run with anybody? Far Saturn? Oh, Thompson's on that horse. Safety train. Last corner leader. There's nothing good about it. Best hunter. I've used you already. Fast growth type. Nope. Yeah, there's not a single horse in that field I even want to attempt to run with, so. I'm just going to keep rolling. After a moment, you take a sip of your drink and, um, take it a little bit too aggressively and you just end up spilling it. I could be speaking for myself. Maybe nobody's actually ever had that happen to them before, but I wouldn't believe you if you said you've never spilled the drink on yourself ever. Even if it's just a little bit. I'm not saying like full on spill your whole shirt or whatever is drenched. I mean, just like you just missed the corner of your mouth a little bit, just a bit. <laughs> Anyways, silent speaker. It's been a while since we've raced with this guy. He's up and he's the favorite in an open. Um, clear by some margins, so I decided just to give him just the green hood. It actually matches our silk colors. I put the hood on him way before I even thought about the silk colors. And again, he's from Desert Derby and Irish Fleet. He's got indomitable spirit. Like, I want to make him good enough for breeding. But his leg types don't give me a lot of flexibility because I either have to run him in last, which he doesn't have the speed to work as a closer. Or I have to run him in the front, but I don't think he has the power and the stamina. So it's like, I don't know where to run him. But since I put the blinkers on him, I think for the first time, I'm going to try running him at the front. Setting the pace, regardless of who's up there, unless they're going to be 15 lanes ahead. Which again, kind of sucks, because like if a horse does want to set the lead at 15 lanes, I have to run with that horse. I can't even settle him anywhere else. Not a good start, so my have to run towards the back. Actually, you know what? Let's push. Let's push. Let's push. Let's push. Let's see what he does. Okay, slow down. Slow down. Yeah, we're gonna get him out here. I mean, he's got Irish Fleet in him. He's got Desert Derby there. Granted, Irish Fleet was clearly the better of the two, but... He should be able to work as a front runner. is my point. I just, you know... <laughs> I need to figure out some things about him. That's the problem. But he is the favorite today, so a win should hopefully reveal some more stats about him. Get rid of those question marks. No seven, so his feel isn't great. Now, who is, is this? The five? I was gonna say, don't don't try to challenge me. We're okay. He's actually not running too hard right now, so this is a good pace for us to keep. They are midway down the back stretch. Okay, stamina is still a couple bars from where I'd like it to be, but he's not running too hard. I mean, we had to push him a little bit, obviously, that first for okay, a long and a half to get him to the, the front to establish that position. But since then, he's been pretty comfortable here. So, um, yeah, he hasn't been running hard at all. We've set pretty slow fractions, so... Two furlongs to go. Let's give him a tap. Let's see how he rolls here. He's quite ahead. But the nine is coming. This is what I mean. I don't think he has the power to work as a front runner. Like, how much earlier am I supposed to start on? He's going to get swallowed up here at the line. But the nine is... He's going to finish second, but that's... Was our goal winner place or was it just winner? I hope it was winner place. No. Yeah, this guy, um, it's one of those horses where the parents just have two conflicting of, like, running styles, stats, whatever. I just, I can't figure it out with him in the front. That's the problem. I can't figure out how to make him at run work as a front runner. And he's gone. Like, it is what it is, man. There's nothing I can really do. I wanted to see if that horse can work because he had indomitable spirit, but I mean, if I can't win with him and I can't do consistently well, it's not worth it anyways, you know? Um, so it's a bummer. I mean, you hate to lose your horses, but at the same time, like, if I can't get dialed in with them pretty quickly, it's it's probably not going to work out long term anyways. I think we've learned that in the past, so I lost, uh, we lost Silent Speaker and we lost Cattail, but both of them were um, difficult to work with. It just we couldn't get into rhythm with them. So 
the fact that we still have Tigress of Stone, which I know I'm not losing at any time. She's like another butterfly effect for sure. She's looking really solid. And Toxic Blonde, I still have hope for. Um, still got to get better, more dialed in with her, but yeah, it's um th this group hasn't um we've lost two out of the four from this group. Um, just kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, if we're not gonna work with them. Yeah, that's just the cards we've been dealt, and ultimately we want to work with. The best horses, you know, the best horses that we can win with consistently. So, if a horse is just going to be a pain, then nothing I can really do about it. You know, I'm not, I'm trying not to be attached in that regards. Usually, if I really like a horse, I'm going to figure it out and we'll, we'll stay together. Silent Speaker, I was hoping I can make it work because again, he had Indomitable Spirit. He just inherited that randomly, but. Um, like I said, his leg types just didn't... He wasn't good enough to run as a front runner or a closer. That's the thing. Like, he needed to be a proceeder or at least a mid-runner. I think he would have benefited perfectly as a proceeder. So, and Cattail, I don't even remember what happened with that horse, but... Kind of an afterthought, unfortunately. Anyways, Toxic Blonde, she's up in an open. Top three goal. So, that means they have a feeling somebody else might beat us. She needs more speed, man. She needs more speed. That's all she does. That's all she needs. If her speed was at least at 80, I think she'd have half of her starts would have been wins already. She's only got one win. Two finishes in the top three out of six starts. The horses are in the gate. And away they go. That was a beautiful start. So. Uh, we'll see. Like, I'm nervous to move her up in competition because until I feel like we can really guarantee those wins, if I don't finish well in a higher staked race, we could lose her. I'm not ready to lose her yet because I still feel like we're slowly getting a better rhythm with her. Now, I don't like what's happening up here. There's, like, no space for me to go anywhere. I don't trust the inside to be open. I don't really want to be stuck. It's just, it's way too many horses up here. I'm going to have to drop her back. Don't bump, don't bump, don't bump, don't bump. I don't like where we are, okay. but like I can't move her because everybody's blocked. just running so closely together. And I'm trying to squeeze her into this gap, I'm trying to get her to the outside here. She's got two sevens right now. Oh, you're gonna keep moving, aren't you? Okay, she's got a good run here. And there you go. Really good run. That gap just opened up. Come on, close race is gonna have to tap in. She's digging in here. Eight still staying with us. She's got really strong art though. I can kind of go quite a hard, kind of hard on the whip. But here comes the eight. Close race, okay, good. Keep digging in. And she's just gonna hold on. This is what I mean. Like I'm getting better with her. It's not dominating victories, and it's just opens. But getting in a little bit of better rhythm with her. And that's her second win. So we'll take it. Two wins out of seven starts. It's not terrible. That was tough. That's why they gave us a top three goals. That's essentially the game's way of telling you, hey, you know, you may win this race, but you also could possibly lose. Moon B. He's up in a grade three. He's the favorite, as he should be. Did I see one of my other horses? No, I'm seeing things. Moon B's five years old already. Can you believe that? As long as his speed is still in the... I mean, it just dropped from, what, 80 to 79. Staying is still up there as well as breaking. He, Moon is still strong enough to run for quite a bit at times. So I'm going to keep running him until I feel like we're not getting anything out of him. Yeah, he's, he's exceeded my expectations. He's done better than both of his parents, easily, up by far. So, Moonbee has been very successful, man. The horses are in the gate. And they're off. That was a beautiful start. Okay, it's a good start here for Moon. Just stacking the wins, getting these points, man. We got six horses coming to the track next year. I want to make sure we're properly prepared for whatever they may cost. And like I said, if I do see a horse in the shop that I do want to buy, that's becoming rarer and rarer these days, but you never know. 
horse may pop up in there, and now I'm like, okay, I gotta get this horse. Like, I would still like fast navy. I would still like fast navy to use in this game. Um, what is happening back here, bro? Like, we can't, I can't get comfortable. Like, I don't want to push them too hard to the front, because they're running pretty fast up there. 11-4, 11-6. They are midway down the back. That's pretty quick. Now they've slowed it down to a 12.0. Top left corner. Red is obviously blistering fast, I think. Green is like mid pace, and then blue okay, is like this the is slowest. where the race is won. So now they've slowed it down, but they were running relatively fast, but it's fine. I mean, they moving is strong enough to take this away. It's been 45 minutes already. It doesn't even feel like it. Two to go. Move over. There we go. Okay, a little bit of a late drive, but Moon is strong enough to take this away. I mean, he is a he is a GWS Sprint champion for a reason. That's the thing. If I can't do these, do this on my horses. We have a winner. Where we're gonna finish up is obviously subject to race conditions. But made that a little bit harder than I needed to, mainly because I got him going a little bit later, but found the gap, we plugged right through, and uh, Moonbee took off and did as he always has done for us. Wins by a length and a quarter over Grand Spring, and double S on the spurt. So it's a good win for Moon. Good G3, we'll take that, the money and the points. They added something new to the catalog, I probably should check that out. I don't know what it is. Oh yeah, two wins for Moonbee and Toxic Bond. So that's what we need, man. Just need to continue to build on those type of um, performances. Still have quite a bit of racing to do, but... This is actually taking a little bit longer than I thought, which is good. That means more content for you guys. I honestly thought we would already be to, like, March by this point. Um, I think we're, I mean, I think we're extremely close. Yeah, still a couple weeks. I mean, still two weeks off from March, technically, and we have only one race today, so. And then a lot of races in March. So I figure um, we'll probably just get through to when the foals are born. And then, um, yeah, I could give you guys another episode here. Uh, yeah, so Moonbee. Still holding on strong there. This is 13th win. Eight grade ones. He's already Hall of Fame bound with the sprint. GWS sprint uh, title. I'd like to post double digits with him. Obviously. And when I'm in a grade three, I'm fine with that. Like I said, let's just keep let's just keep my horses in condition. Continue to win races with them. I'm Tossy Blonde. 50 stamina. I was kind of worried her stam wasn't that great. So yeah, Blue's Breeze is definitely not a sire I'll be using for any more horses. Her stats are mediocre. Like, we've seen what type of stats we can get from a horse with Lee's Gold. Like, look at he's stargazing. I mean, outside of, like, those 40s and 50s, like, the 70s is what I wanted, and he's been on the decline. But, um... And look at Golden Boy as well. He's a prime example. His stamina was over 90 at one point. His power was at 80. So, Lee's Gold with the right sire can give you a horse with decent stats in the right categories, but apparently Blue's Breeze is just not a good combination for her, because you see the difference in Golden Boy stats and Stargazing stats compared to Toxic Blonde. Her speed is the only thing holding her together. So, she's got two wins out of seven starts. I feel like, I, I just, yeah... I don't think we'll be using her for breeding unless she starts to really turn up for us. Kind of want to run her on the dirt just to see what happens, if I can, but... LA Oaks, I mean, I don't think anybody else is going to be running in that, so let's give her a shot. Tigers of Stone is definitely our main focus right now, of the three-year-olds. Um, yeah, without a doubt. Tigers of Stone over Black Ruby and Toxic Blonde. Just because, like I said, Toxic Blonde, you know, she just, her stats are just not as good for what she needs. Like, she would benefit as a proceeder with those type of stats. But her as a closer, she doesn't have crazy closing speed, really. Not like, she, not like you'd want. So, um. 
Yeah, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. But on the Bolero, he's up again. Expected to finish eighth on the dirt. Because, again, he's not a dirt horse. But, you know, let's just see how he handles it. Just because of that, his power rating. I just feel like he's going to struggle on the turf. And we're going to have to run a perfect race just to get a good result out of him on the turf. I don't feel like there's a lot of flexibility, which kind of sucks. The horses are in the gate. So let's try him out on the dirt, and if he just doesn't do well enough on the dirt, uh, my only option and is to stick to the dirt. Great start. You know? But I'm hoping that he can still be decent enough on the dirt to, um, to maybe give us something more to consider, but we'll see. No. He does have last corner leader, he has spurt, he has explosive, I think. So... How do we drop back this far? That was not what I was trying to do. My bad, bro. Yeah, like I said, I know certain dirt tracks also have these type of inclines, you know. But I'd rather us hit that on the back stretch than on the main front stretch. Like, that's where he ends up losing a lot of stamina in the stretch and he gets beat. I feel like if he has to tackle that in the earlier stages of the race, that's a lot better than waiting until the stretch when he's already tired and then you're trying to push him over that, you know, over that point. Two furlongs to go. Okay, he's got a good run here. Last corner leader. There it is. Now, if he can win on the dirt like this, maybe Great Bolero is still in there somewhere, but the field is coming. He's not supposed to win this race today. Keep that in mind. But this is what I mean when he doesn't have an incline to run up in the last furlong of the race. We have a winner. He wins. <laughs> that's, why I've that's why I'm considering putting him on the dirt, because I'm like, I'd rather him deal with a loss of stamina on the back stretch if that's going to happen as opposed to obviously in the final stretch because if that was a turf race and we ran up an incline in that last furlong he would have lost that race 100 percent so i don't know maybe we can't convert him to a dirt horse you know what i mean we weren't supposed to win on dirt at all <laughs> to win on even such a weak horse that proves talent my goodness bro why are you taking shots at our horse like that he's not weak I mean, yeah, his power isn't good, but he's not, like, that, well, can we just say he's just not strong? I don't think, not being, not being, like, super strong doesn't mean you're necessarily weak. Weak to me means you have no strength. He has some in there, but it's, I mean, it's not great. Okay, 49 power, I mean, okay. Maybe he's a little bit on the weakest side, clearly. And they're still not giving me anything about his dirt rating. I'm going to run him on the dirt again. That was a good result. Yeah, I'm going to run him on the dirt again and see what happens. Because running, running him in the February S. I mean, I suppose if I did that, he would have long shot odds. I don't think I have anything to lose. How long is that race? Eight furlongs? He's five years old. I know he'll be in the green, but he'll also... Be, I mean, he'd be in the blue for this nine for a long, and then the world peace on Hiroshima. That's a grade three, but I'm a, I'm going to put him in this grade one. If Hopefully we have over odds, goals, then there's no pressure of where I need to finish with him. That's kind of what I'm hoping. But he's still only C-ranked at best. He, might, he may only be a B or A-ranked horse tops. Probably B-ranked, if that... So yeah, let's just see how he do, does on the dirt. All right, Tigress of Stone though, she's up first in another grade three, second favorite. Blue's Bird is the horse we have to beat with Newman on board. Hmm. What do they like so much about that horse that they're not giving my girl the chance? They're giving her a chance, but they're saying she's second best. Blue's Bird, what's your deal? You're slightly faster, your stam is worse, you're still growing, you have the same, well, you have close race okay too, but I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I, what? Okay, you know what, it's a scout racer being gout racer. But if the horse beats us, fair play. The horses are that in the horse gate. beats us fair play, man. And the way to go. That was a beautiful start. Okay, here 
go. What are we looking out for? Idle body? No, I just saw a loose bird. Slow down, please, Tigris. We are not going for the lead. Okay. Six horses not happy. Okay, this is where the race is. Good won. thing is Tigris is very responsive. Like I told her, we we needed to slow down. She slows down. She doesn't fight with me, and we're all fine and dandy here. And they're in the home stretch. Show your guts. Let's get a good drive with her. Right. About time we tapped into that. It's been a while. Is she really going to lose to this nine horse or is she going to fight back? Here comes Newman on the three to split the both of us, which is fair play. Uh, Tigra, she's digging in, but. Yeah, it's going to be second best. Fair play. Maybe Finish. third. No, oh, third best. Wow. Yeah, I didn't time my spurt right. That's definitely on me. I still think we were the better horse, but I didn't I didn't feel comfortable in that race as much as I wanted to. It's always weird for me to time my spurt on tracks like that where it's like in deep deeper into the stretch. I'm supposed to finish twelfth out of fourteen, so I still gotta beat two horses today. Ah it's a race I want back with Tigris, you know. I tapped into grit and it did absolutely nothing really. <laughs> the horses are on the track. Key forgetting though, with her we need um with her we need to, to get her out in front for the sure. Horses are in They're the that game. last corner leader. I goofed up on that. I always forget on those tracks just because like I said, your spurts technically when you're already on a straight. I like kind of being able to overtake and get into the lead coming off of a turn, but as opposed to picking the right point to start it on a track, it feels weird. I like on a straight track is what I'm trying to say. It feels very weird. Especially if I'm not on a horse that can handle it, you know? Like, if you don't get that timed right on those type of tracks, that, that effectively ruins your race for a win. Unless you have a super strong horse that can make it happen. I think Tigris is strong, but she's not Butterfly strong. She's not Diamond Plant, Formal Opera, you know, that type of strong. So, she'll struggle, but... Okay, this is where the I mean, Bolero's won. doing okay on the dirt as far as where he's settling, so obviously my goal is going to be to... Is that awesome? That's for Army. Make sure we, um... Gotta get him. And they're in the home stretch! They're not going to give us last corner leader on this one, are they? No. Show your gut. He's got to beat two horses. I just want to see how he fights. Got to beat two. Come on, Valero, you got it, bro. It's dropping quite heavy, though. That's not an idea. Finish. Ah, I'm just gonna beat one. Yeah, I mean he was in the green anyways. It wasn't not like I was expecting much, but I, I don't think he's bad on the dirt. But it's two bad performances and cannot have. Yeah, that's, um, I took a shot with that. It is what it is. Yeah. Didn't hit my goal with either one of them. I hope I didn't lose both of them. That would kind of be depressing. Galaxy Star. She's going to be four stars already for future from Vivid Legend and Chasing Hearts. It's fantastic. But we have three new horses born from Chasing Hearts, Fiery Dancer, and Oz Autumn. So we have another Vivid Legend and Chasing Hearts cult. I'll leave him unnamed. We'll name him probably in the, when I get back to live streaming. We have Naive Mood from Flying Cowboy and Fiery Dancer. Three generations on both sides and stacked. Look at this pedigree. Naive Mood could be a sleeper. On his father's side, he has Flying Cowboy, Western Tiger, Suave Buster. And then on his mother's side, he has Fiery Dancer, Sedate Ruler, and Aunt B. He's really got two great sires on both sides and two great mothers I mean two great broodmares so hopeful for this guy naive mood 
Flying Cowboy's proven to be an awesome sire so far, just like his father, Western Tiger. So, and then we have Blues Breeze and Awesome on him. I didn't realize I did Blues Breeze again. I'm kind of annoyed by that because I don't feel like his horses are working for us. It's a filly. Hope maybe Awesome Autumn will balance out. So we got one or two Colts and one Philly. All right. Ah oh, man, let's see who got our two-year-olds. But before that, let me make sure I still have Bolero and I do and Tigris. All right, just want to make sure I didn't lose either of them. Hmm. She has decent enough stats. We really should have won that grade three with her, but like just nothing happened. She tapped into grit and she just didn't go anywhere, but she has last corner leader. She's a horse I probably have to get into the front definitively. Is there a grade one I can toss her into? Australia at six, can she handle that? She definitely can. I'm gonna go ahead and toss her in that G1. I, I need to see how she'll do. You wanna live Bolero? Gotta give you the layoff now. Wait till you're back in the blue, basically. I'm running an open on the dirt. I still want to continue to try that. I want to see what his dirt rating actually is. The game is just hiding it from me, as it always does. It's getting closer to his peak. He's only got four wins and 18 starts, though. He's certainly underachieving. He's pretty much doing the same thing as his father, Onyx Prince. I was hopeful we would have had more wins with him, but... Yeah. I'll say I have to remember counterclockwise, not good as well, so there's got a lot of good abilities that's the thing you know but his stats are, aren't good so it's just like you can only get so much out of them all right well um we're actually at an hour so i think i didn't really want to end the episode on that that note just from a losing perspective um actually, i actually need to check a couple things out but I think that'll still be a good place. I always go to the info office because I always feel like that's a place like the catalog should be, but it's not. <laughs> so what do we just get? Like, I don't pay attention to this stuff. When right center, dream cup. Oh yeah, finally. <laughs> so we can hit the dream series this year, in all honesty. That's big time. We we definitely have a couple horses we can try to win that dream series with. I'm it's gonna be hard, but the fact that I can finally enter it into it now. Nazawa's getting vivid gemstone. Beautiful. I mean you see who Nazawa has already. Tigris of Stone, four for seven in her wins. Vivid gemstone from Vivid Legend out of Pink Gemstone. This gal should be amazing. Looking forward to her. And then let's see who has my other foal. Sheba, no. Silent Speaker. So since Silent Speaker has disappeared from us, he's only run in one other race where he was the favorite and finished in 12th or 11th, actually. Wow. So clearly it's not me. Yeah, clearly the horse, yeah, the horse is just not good, really. So I don't feel too bad. I hate losing my horses, but Stargazing, look at this guy. 14 wins out of 20 starts, 8 G1s. And he's on a winning streak as we speak two wins cook cook has leaves cowboy she's doing well with butterfly effect we're trying to pick up the toxic blonde she's got leaves cowboy from flying cowboy out of leaves gold this guy should be strong so let's see how everybody else is doing cattail let's see yeah, they've dropped a couple of races with her as well. So I guess I don't feel too bad. I mean, that's the thing. It's like these horses are... I lost these horses for a reason. They were just difficult to work with. So yeah, I mean, she hasn't won since she's raced with me. Um, so yeah, there's not much happening there. Parks is doing fantastic with Moonbeam and Golden Boy. Pink has nobody. Except for... Um, well, it was Diamond Plan, right? Who is Formal Opera? Is it? No, I thought it was Pink. Is it not? Um, I want to sort by purse. Um, Pink. Don't you have? Yeah, Pink does have Formal Opera. That's what I thought. Okay. 
Oh, good. Two, I mean, as always, like good trainers end up getting my horses. I don't usually have to worry about somebody I don't like getting them. Guys, that's going to do it uh, for today's episode. It was not bad. Definitely not our best. I've definitely dropped a couple, but that was because obviously we've lost a couple of horses that we just weren't going to really make it work with. I was trying, excuse me, my best, but um, it just wasn't going to happen, clearly. So we'll get back into it. Another episode. I already showed you guys the breeding we're going to do. And then, um, yeah, after that episode, uh, I'm hoping that I'll be uh, in the in the mindset and ready to live stream. Um, but until then, I just want to continue to play, give you guys some episodes like this, and, and we'll get back to the live stream. Keep in mind as well, we're still going to be starting the Galbracer World Cup. So that's actually still going to technically take precedence for my live streaming time over just streaming 2004. Since that, that's an official uh, series with you guys involved. So... We'll get back to 2004 live streaming eventually, but um, until then, there will be another episode for you guys coming soon. And like I said, we're going to go ahead and get through the month of March, start our journey, try to get towards the GWS, or excuse me, the Dream Series. Uh, stargazing, I think, and running the Dream Series. Moon, potentially, because Moon has just exceeded my expectations. Butterfly Effect and Golden Boy, for sure. We know at least, I think, I, we have four horses and formal opera, but... Um, for sure, as far as our originals are concerned, I should say. That's what I'm sp specifically focusing on. Golden Boy, Butterfly Effect, Moonbeam, Stargazing. Depending on how things pan out, if we get there. Uh, I would be... I I'd feel confident and comfortable with them in the Dream Series, at least to do well. And then whoever else we could enter, if anybody, we'll, we'll take it from there. But I appreciate you guys for the love and support on the channel as always. But until next time, Horse Racing Gamer sending out. Hope you have a great and fantastic day. I'll see you later, and goodbye. Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made.